warm out there. It's going to be even warmer tomorrow. Hey, how are you doing? I read every comment. I listen to everybody. I also, too, cruising through, like, um, Instagram, read what other people say, especially about important, relevant topics. How do you like this little invention? This is my own. You actually fits on your belt like that. It's a simple little device. It holds a box of shells to let you figure out what kind of shells it holds. Isn't that neat? It's ingenious. Yeah. My little invention. It works great, too, by the way. I'm not selling that, by the way. I, use, uh, I made a few of those for some local folks, and I uh, just thought I'd show you that. Creative little sucker with skills, right? You can sit there and invent things in my head and build them in my head, and that's a great skill to have. Um, I noticed on a lot of different, going through Instagram feed uh, late at night, like, uh, there'd be various people telling you, oh, prepare, you know, danger, Will Robinson. And I, you know, quickly scroll through the comments, I can very quickly read what people are saying. And uh, like, you know, you're, it's wonderful that you're telling people to prepare, but you actually didn't say anything about how or what, uh, you know, proper way to prepare. You know, there's, in, there's a stupid way to prepare and there's a smart way to prepare. And I've never heard anybody say it like this before. There might be somebody out there, but I've absolutely not heard it. I'd like to give some logical, uh, really logical advice on this. By the way, I don't pretend to be a financial advisor. I don't pretend to be one, not even the least make wise, intelligent decisions for yourself. And this is not really about uh, finance. It's only just a little bit, but uh, mostly about how to prepare for incoming CBDC and also to just things in general, uh, collapse. Um, by the way, if you knew, it's kind of like your last meal, right? If you're on death row. If you knew CBDC um, was uh, very soon to be put into place, which it is, especially Australia, what is it you think you'd buy you know, if you knew that uh, the digital currency wouldn't let you buy it, what would be one of the first things you think about buying? That's just a random question I put out there to you. I, uh, I have my own answer on that one, but I'll let you, you know, tell me what you think on that one. So I see a lot of people actually complaining that other people are telling people to prepare, and this is blatantly obvious. Just hundreds of people. They don't tell you what to do or how to prepare. And here's... A very, very short checklist, and it's something you need to think about because everybody's different. I mean, you might have little rug rats and, you know, wife and or husband, et cetera, et cetera, significant others. So you have your own particular nuances, but these things are applicable to everybody. So I have basically a, a seven-point uh, checklist here, and then I'd like to fill in the blanks on some of those and give you some suggestions. I like to actually be helpful. And I think this is way better. Actually, I don't think so. I know so. Way more helpful than a lot of things other people have put out there. You know, saying buy rice and beans. It's like everybody's heard that. Now, nobody's interested. Everybody's kind of broke these days. I mean, I feel the same way everybody else does, believe it or not. And it's like, well, you know, I'd like to prepare and buy things. But I don't want to buy stuff and it turns out I don't need it. And I've got a way around that, and that's the premise for most of this video. The four questions you need to ask, however, given your certain circumstances, which are specific to you and your family, whether you have one or not, is the questions, does it feed you? Does it water you? In other words, hydrate you, because as, as important, more important than food, actually. So does it feed you? Does it water you? Does it protect you? And does it keep you warm? Those four questions. If you're in somewhere in the tropics, the question might also be, does it keep you cool? In which case, of course, you need to buy solar panels and invest in a battery bank, uh, whether it be lithium, which is quite expensive. I have a few 100-amp-hour uh, lithiums. I also, too, recommend investing in, if you're going to invest in the cheap Great Route, 150-amp-hour uh, lead-acid golf cart batteries. They're ones that are better than others. I'll let you do your own research on the best for those. So in feeding you, seeds, and there's more than just these few, but considerations. Feeding you, seeds, land. Land feeds you many more ways than one. Also, too, it protects you and hydrates you and keeps you warm in the form of trees. So seeds, <clears throat> land, non-perishable food. Does it water you? Water filtration. Water is basically everywhere, unless you're in the desert. Um, a well 
and there are other options. Also, too, you know, water filtration is incredibly, incredibly, whether it be Berkey or personal, such as uh, Hiker or uh, some of the emergency survival ceramics, uh, like uh, the Kated and Pocket Filter, which is Swiss. It's used by uh, even uh, Navy SEALs and Delta Force. I have a couple of those myself. Also, two larger scale water filtration. I have a spring on my land. It's part of the reason why I bought my land. And I put my money where my mouth is. I sold everything not glued down that I don't need. That's also to another consideration you need to make. It's like, well, how willing are you to do that? And you need to ask yourself the question, what do I have in my being that's not going to be making me any more money? I'm not using and I'm not enjoying, but it has value, at least still has value, that I could part with so that I could actually make a change of circumstances for myself and or my family. Um, protect you. Of course, whether you live in the United States or other places, this is, of course, highly applicable and very specific. Defensive tools. Food. A lot of people never consider medicine. They're always prepping and doing, buying beans and this and that and, you know, all sorts of things to eat and drink and whatnot. And they completely leave out medicine. I'd like to talk about that in a second, just in a few seconds here. Specifically antibiotics like Augmentin and... Uh, ciproflaxin and others. Talk to your doctor about that, of course. Does it keep you warm? Land keeps you warm. Well, how does it do that? Most land, unless it's nasty desert scrub land or someone has already raked the trees off of it. You know, I have many, many, many lifetimes worth of trees to keep me warm and my wood stove. So wood stove and uh, land. Now you need to maybe make considerations for um, uh, air conditioning and unfortunately air conditioning draws a lot of power. So you need a significant battery bank and a solar array. Um, recommend the 320 watt Renogy. You can get uh, four 320 watt Renogies, which would take care of a, of a simple family's most of their needs, not like powering everything up like a normal house, but uh, four of the 320 watts, and I have several of those also. They're $1,340 currently for four of those. And it's basically um, a buck a watt. Very cheap uh, for it. No, not polycrystalline. Of course, this monocrystalline mono solar panel. You need some charge controllers, a good charge controller, which is about 400 bucks. Um, 2,000, 4,000 watt inverter, another few hundred dollars. Cheap thrills, ultimately, in the scheme of the system. Um, I've bought a lot of medicine kits that keep up at my cabin, and you can actually get them really, really cheap on eBay. Type in, uh, you'll find them. They'll have like 50 to like 150 or 200 items. And they're really, really, really cheap. Some are better than others. Some of them have way too many bandages in them. Like, pfft. So a lot, look for the ones that actually have a diversification, like iodine, bandages, quick clot for quick clot, blood clotting. A lot of other things that you actually need. Don't just get one that have bundles of bandages and uh, gloves. Man, I've... I have scored a mountain of medical equipment for really, 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 really cheap on eBay. And this comes as surplus, and most of it is still long off in the future for expiring, and a lot of the stuff that does expire is still useful. They put the expiration dates on there for, I'm sure you already know the answer to that one. Um, so get medicine kits on eBay. And I don't mean already pre-made, I mean they have, a, they'll send you a big Ziploc bag full of 200, 400 items. They're like 24 bucks to $40, depending on what's inside them. They're really, really killer deals. I mean, I'm no fan of eBay, but you go on eBay and get the, uh, the medical kits. Build your own medical kit. And uh, I made uh, a medical kit video with a checklist about a year or so ago. You can find all sorts of them out there, like Steristrips and Quick Clot and I I uh, Iodine, Aspirin, bandages, on and on and on, uh, first aid emergency stuff, tourniquets, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Those are really wonderful. You should buy that. On Here's the other three part of the four-point uh, list, making up the seven items in total. So the first four, of course, were does it feed you? Does it water you? In other words, keep you hydrated, filtration and water. Does it protect you? And does it keep you warm? The other three, and this is the point where I diverge from a lot of the other lunacy that's out there, just tells you to go out and buy a, B, C, X, Y, Z. It's like, well, they might give you really good recommendations, but it's like, I know a lot of people are thinking, it's like, you know, times are really tight. I don't want to buy something and it go bad or I never need it and I wasted a bunch of money. 
And I'm going to get to that in a second. Dual or triple or even quadruple use uh, preparation assets. And uh, you know what? You need to ask yourself as far as your finances, what you actually have available and what your income is. The allowable expenditure that you and or your family are able to make that doesn't put you or your family in any type of financial bind. Ask yourself what that percentage is and what that figure is. I don't know it. Each one of you is personal. I'm personal on that front. So is everybody. Um, you need to make uh, preparations of uh, assets that are a hedge against inflation and, of course, asset diversification. This includes uh, silver and platinum. I'm no fan of gold. is astronomically overpriced right now. There are a lot of different things that are assets, of course. depends on how dire the circumstances get. The one thing that's worth infinitely more than gold in a really dire situation, like one example, would be antibiotics. Nobody ever says that. Like, what's... What if you're in a really tough situation and it's like worth infinitely more than its weight in gold? Antibiotics. Well, antibiotics don't last long. You keep them in the refrigerator, yeah, they'll last long. Or the freezer specifically, yeah, they'll, they'll keep a long time. Talk to your doctor about that, uh, about stockpiling, and have a discussion with your doctor or nurse practitioner about what sort of the best is. Uh, I don't give medical advice. Uh, the best broad spectrum is uh, Augmentin. Uh, my favorite is uh, ciproflaxin. I've taken it several times before, not recently, however. Um, so what is your allowable expenditure? Number two, once again, preparation assets that are the hedge against inflation and asset diversification. As the best experts in the world all agree, cash is trash. If CBDC is going to be implemented and if things get dire, I don't care how much money you got in your bank, it's going to be a time of tangibles. It's like... Which would you rather have? Useful tangibles in your hand that amount to $10,000? Useful tangibles worth 10000 bucks, whatever those things may be, one or many things, or 100000 in the bank. When things get dire and tangibles are inaccessible, in other words, you can't get it. 10000 remember that old saying, a bird in the hand is worth two in the bush? You remember that saying? It's odd. I find it odd me personally, that people don't understand what a bird in a hand is worth two in the bush means. If you don't know, go look it up. Number three, and this is a really important one, nobody's talking about when they talk about buying and prepping items. Things that you will not regret buying because A, B, C, you can get your money back out of it and or more money. And also, too, that you can enjoy it. Land is the number one perfect example. I've made wise choices in land purchases. Whoops, I touched my microphone there. I enjoy it. The very little time I'm able to relax on it. You know, it's an investment. It's number one most important prepping thing. I love being on it and crawling on it and walking on it and going down to my spring and enjoying nature. I mean, it is like a 10-point list, but it's also, too, number one on the list for prepping. People's like, oh, I know I really need to buy land and I can afford to, but I don't think anything's going to happen. It could happen. You know, you might be right. Everybody's saying, you know, you should get prepared. I said, what about land? You can, you know, it's not like you're just buying it as a prepping item. It's an investment if you buy it right, of course. You know, don't buy a bad investment in land. And I've got checkpoint lists on that in the description below. What to look for in buying raw land. It's an investment. It's the number one prepping item. You can enjoy yourself. You and your family could have fun unless they, like, hate nature. And there are those people. There's city slickers out there, yeah? They're afraid of, like, walking in the woods. Or just, yeah, people like that are weird. Weird. <laughs> Whatever makes you happy. But, I mean, it just checks off every list. So things that you would not regret buying, and I'm going to talk about that, uh, a short list of those here in a second. So, in other words... You're buying them to prep, but you're not going to be in any situation in the future, say, hopefully. You know, I don't want anything bad to happen. Say a few years down the road, oh, my God, I spent like $30,000 on land and some prepping items, and that money's what. You know, you can use them and enjoy them. They have dual, triple, or quadruple usage, like land. Fun, investment, number one for prepping, on and on and on. You know, it's got wood to keep you warm. You know, because you don't want to depend on the man. This is the reason why everybody should have a wood stove. I know a lot of people that have retrofitted their homes with wood stoves, even though they've got natural gas and electric and on and on. You know, they have a piece of land. 
Like if the power goes off, they're not going to freeze because they got land with unlimited supply of wood and they got a wood stove redundancy. My motto is redundancy is God. Not literally God, but redundancy is God. There's a motto that you should remember. I've been using that motto now for a very, very, very long time. Redundancy is God. So here's the list of dual, triple, or quadruple preparation assets. Land. It feeds you, it isolates you, it gives you fuel from trees, it's an investment, on and on and on and on. It's a long laundry list. Non-perishable food that you can consume. I know of no other non-perishable food other than honey that is literally, you could sell it like 10 years later. Like 10 years later. The answer to that is called mountain house meals. You can find them on Amazon. I've basically tasted every flavor. You think, oh, those are MRE meals. They're not MRE. They're really, 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 really tasty. Um, the life on those is 30 years. You will be dead before they expire. Man, I've tasted their lasagna, posture primavera, breakfast skillet, biscuits and gravy. Mm-mm. One of the best lasagnas I've ever had, believe it or not. When you open them up, they look like the inside of a, uh, a vacuum cleaner bag. <laughs> they look like a bunch of dust. Uh, incredible. 30 years. Typically, depending on the meal, like 10 or $11 a bag. Some are a little more expensive, some are a little less, depending on the ingredients. So non-perishable food like that, things that you can consume along the way. You're not going to be like, oh, God, I bought this stuff and I wasted my money. It's like, no, you can still eat it. It's still an emergency asset, not just a necessary preparedness asset. Um, water filtration. My God, that's the one thing everybody forgets, water filtration. You know, the one thing with all these uh, chemical fires and spills is called a, a PGE 400 gas mask. Type in, um, what is an SGE, excuse me, SGE 400 uh, gas mask. Type that in on eBay. Like about 290 bucks, 300 bucks. That's not on this list, but I just thought about that. Like how man important is that now? Um, emergency power and solar. Like Ocmos, I mean, power has gone out so many times just this year alone. It's been wonderful to actually have an Ocmo station. Um, defensive tools. I'll let you figure out what those are depending on the country you're in. Tools for defending thyself and thy family. Hmm, what would that be? Hmm. Wait a minute, let me, let me put my thinking glasses on and let you figure out what a defensive tool would be. There we go. Hmm. What would that be? Hmm. What's that fat tattooed guy talking about? Hmm. <laughs> I've had too much caffeine today. Uh, <clears throat> yeah, defensive tools. Silver, hedge against inflation and asset diversification. Silver keeps going up. Um, buy it now before it's too late. Silver is, once again, a really, really, really bad investment. You're not buying it as an investment. You're buying it as a hedge against inflation, but primarily as asset diversification. Why? Because cash is trash. Government can't print silver. No government can. Government prints lots of money. Printing machine go brrrr, brrrr. <laughs> You ever see anybody printing out silver? No. No. Silver. A fireplace, i.e. a wood stove. Like I said a lot of people retrofitted their homes, even though they have, you know, central heating and air and gas. They got everything in their house. But they have a piece of land, and they know they could heat their house. If things get so bad that, like, heating the house becomes astronomically impossible, they go to their land, they go choppy, 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 bring home the wood, stick it in the fireplace, light it up. Yeah. Um, here's some other things down this list. Uh, lighters and ferrocerium rods. The most uh, useful tool on planet Earth is a ferrocerium rod. They're unbelievable tools for starting a fire. Coconut oil. Man, uh, everybody comments on my skin, you know. Oddly enough, they do. The answer is coconut oil. It also, too, when you go out in the woods, it protects against mosquito bites and tick bites and all sorts of bugs, and it's good for cooking. Man, oh man, stockpile yourself some uh, coconut oil. Seeds, uh, alcohol such as vodka, which is the cheapest because it's it itself is a form of money. Always has been. Use it for cooking, use it for cleaning, uh, antiseptic purposes, on and on. I don't drink. Okay, I don't drink. I don't drink, but I got a lot of alcohol in the basement. 
Uh, go to like Costco and get that $12 bottle of 1.75 liter stuff. Uh, dry nut butter. You can get that too at Costco. It looks like dust in a jar. It's powdered peanut butter. Peanut butter is not my favorite by far, but that powdered stuff will last you a long, 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 long time. Looks like dust in a, in a powdered peanut butter. Nuts. I did cross my eyes when I did that on purpose, by the way. Storage containers, mil spec surplus. I got an Army Navy store here. I get the mil spec surplus stuff there. Bullion cubes, real maple syrup, honey, which is the only food on earth that never, ever, ever, ever goes bad. Spare primary parts, parts, uh, consumable parts are the most important things that you own. You know, like spark plugs, batteries. Consumable, uh, spare parts for consumable, like the things you use every day. And once again, redundancy is God. Everybody needs a, a, a utility knife, uh, more than one. My top recommendations are USA made in Oregon. They're really top quality. It's a Gerber LMF2. Never buy them on eBay because they're all counterfeit on eBay. Get them on Amazon or directly from Cabela's or Bass Pro Shop. Never buy them on eBay. They're all counterfeit there. Gerber LMF and the Gerber Strong Arm. There's other ones, but those are definitely my favorite. Um, so you've prepared yourself, but you will not have any point in time like a year or two or three from now. Hopefully not, you know, the stuff is happening. We all know it, anybody with two brain cells. You ain't going to say, oh, God, I spent money on this stuff. And now it's just like going to waste. That's never going to happen with land unless you stupidly buy a horrible value. That's the only way that's going to happen. Stuff that you're going to use anyway that has dual, triple, and quadruple uses. Remember this seven-point checklist. Does it feed you? Does it water you? Does it protect you? Does it keep you warm? And the other three-point checklist is allowable expenditure percentage that you can make such that, you know, it's not going to put you or your family in a financial bind. And you're actually preparing yourself with assets that are a hedge against inflation and asset diversification. You're not going to look at it ever and go, oh, God, I spent my money on this stuff because I was worried about something happened and now I wasted my money. See, by following this simple premise in this video, I've not seen anybody else talk about it, you've prepared yourself, but you've not thrown your money down a hole where like, oh, I spent my money and you know, it's, all, it's all wasted. Those Mountain House meals last 30 years. 30 years. They will outlast you unless you're a young person, okay? And uh, things that you're not going to regret buying because you can always get your money back out of it or a lot more and you can enjoy it and it has multiple uses. Number one on that list is land. Okay, water filtration, emergency power. Even if nothing ever happens, everybody should have emergency power and solar, you know? I hope you like this video. If you want to contact me, my email is in the description below. Also, to any donation is always warmly welcome. And there's also, too, a food checklist below. Talk about main tips and primary foods. It's a two-page list. It's really good. I made it myself. I hope you like it. And I hope you have a lovely weekend. Lux Everitas.